If you explore the crest of the Sierra Nevada, or look at a map of these mountains, you will see that there are high plateaus scattered throughout the range. In Yosemite, at places like Mount Excelsior, Kuna Crest, Parsons Peak, we find these high flat plateaus up at elevations around 12,000 feet. Right along the crest, you had these plateaus that stuck out above the glaciers. And so actually the glaciers were carving around them. So they've ended up being kind of these isolated, islands where we find unusual plant species that don't occur anywhere else. When you drive up the Tioga Road and you look up at the peaks around you, you see where the forest ends, and then it looks like all rock and ice. But if you take the trouble to get up onto that rocky summit, in between the rocks is just the most incredible rock garden of wildflowers of every color, of every shape. The plants are very short. They might only be a few inches in diameter, but most of them will count their lives in decades. And the, some of the larger ones very likely count their lives in centuries. diversity and the variety and the sheer aesthetic beauty of it is, is just overwhelming. Um, oh, one more Andrasasi in there. So today we're just going to do a, a count, a survey of this tiny little primrose up here. And we'll also take GPS um, coordinates, where it is, map it so we'll know where it is. And then also try to figure out what the associated species are that it likes to grow with. So one kind of plant will often co-occur with another kind of plant and that can be an indicator of what kind of environment you're likely to find it in. We're working on a project funded by the Yosemite Conservancy to inventory the plants found in these sky islands. How many plants there are, how, where they're found, what habitats they prefer to live in. The purpose of this is to understand how these plant communities may change over time. Well, one of the showiest flowers that we have up here is the sky pilot. And it's bright purple-blue. The color is really hard to describe, actually. But it's funny because you'll be walking up these slopes and you'll just think, oh my gosh, it's all rock. And then you get up a little closer and you start seeing this brilliant blue-purple color everywhere. We've got several species of alpine buckwheat up here. It's a classic cushion plant with very dense, hair-covered leaves. So these are white-flowered, turning red once they've been pollinated. But once a pollinator lands, there's a little signal here like, oh, well, this is the flower that still has nectar, still has pollen, still wants to be pollinated. The other really nice one are the alpine gold, and it's a daisy. The bighorn sheep like to graze on it, but that's a really special plant if you get a chance to see that one. These plants that we see up here are adapted to live in this cold, dry, windy world. We find them only in these highest places. If the climate changes, they can't go any higher and they may not be able to adapt fast enough. So we want to learn as much as we can about these plants while they're still here. 
I was expecting the plant diversity up here to be pretty low, maybe like 25, 40 species or so, but right now we're at around 100 species up at this site. So the diversity here is really surprising to me. Biologically speaking, the frontier is still all around us. There's still a lot to be discovered. Who knows, we'll find lots of things up on this mountaintop we didn't expect to find here. Uh, it just takes a lot of careful, close observation. We get up here and we walk around and we get down on our hands and knees and look very closely at the flora and we find all kinds of stuff that nobody had any idea was up here.